So you want to learn how to build a wall just like this. You can set up each individual component. You can see we have wood here, we have stone here. You can see we currently need two stone. So if I go add the two stone, boom, boom, we build the wall. Keep on watching to learn how to do this. So firstly, let's set up the object that we want to build. I'm going to make it a wall. And then I'm also going to make a version that is an unbuilt version and give it a material that fits. Oh, there we go. I just made it like a transparent blue color. In case you're wondering how to do this, under the material, uh, I'm on the universal render pipeline. Instead of opaque, you can go for transparent and then you can set the alpha of the object to how transparent you want it to be. Now, let's make, well, both of these, let's make them prefab. And I'm gonna delete my wall. And now for the unbuilt wall, we're gonna make a new script. I'm gonna call this script buildable to say that this is what we put on objects that can be built. And let's open up the script. So well, first of all, I want to say what is it going to be built into. So it's going to be prefab, which is a public game object and then finished object. And then we also want a list of components. Now for this, I'm going to make my own uh, public class, which is just going to be called components, a component. And for now, I don't actually have anything. I don't have an inventory system. I don't have anything like that. So for now, I'm just going to make the component itself into an integer. So I'm just going to make public int and then uh, component index return. Now we're going to make a public list of components, which is called build component. Make that equal to a new list. And it's important that this class we make it system dot serializable. Actually, under the component, let's just give it a string name as well. So public string uh, component name. This is just fun. It's not really actually going to have much of an effect. But it's just to give you guys a better idea of the structure. So let's just make it, for example, wood and component index zero. And let's do stone and make it index one. So instead of the index, you would normally have something to compare it to. So for example, let's say you have an inventory system that is built on scriptable objects. Well, then you would actually want the scriptable object here instead of your integer. Now let's make a new script for the player. This script is going to be called player building. For example, you can call it whatever, doesn't matter. And let's just add this script to the player. And let's open up the script. So in here, we want a public float for the distance that we can build. So building distance. Uh, and then in the update loop, we can make a raycast. So let's do a raycast hit, call it hit. And then if physics.raycast, if you don't know how raycast work, I will definitely recommend you go check out the documentation on this. So in the raycast, first of all, we've got to say where it raycasts from. It's going to be from the camera transform position. I'm using camera.main because there's only one camera in my scene. So I can just do it like this. And then the direction as well, which is going to be camera.main.transform forward, which means the direction the camera is looking. Now, if, you, if you're not using the main camera, you have multiple cameras, something like that. You can just put another reference to the camera here, obviously. Now here we've got to say out hit. We've got to give it the building distance. Now let's also just give it a new public layer mask, which is going to be building layer. And we're going to add this into the raycast as well. Now, now we have a fully functioning raycast. Then first of all, we want to make a check to say that the object that we're hitting has the buildable component. If it doesn't, we obviously can't manipulate it. So we're going to say uh, hit.transform.gameobject.getComponent buildable so and then does not equals to null and now in here we can say print hit buildable object like so and if we go out and test now let's put the unbuilt wall onto a layer let's just call it buildable layer like so we're gonna add the unbuilt wall to this we're gonna go onto the player add the on uh, the buildable layer onto here and then let's set a build distance of three for example now whenever i look at this you'll see it will print that we hit a buildable object so that's a good start. Now let's put all of this, or for that sake, in here we can just say and input dot get key down, uh, and let's just do key code dot e for example, since I want to build with e. This just means that it only runs this code if we're actually pressing e as well. Now since I don't have an inventory system or anything like that, I'm just gonna set up a new part for testing. I'm just gonna make header and call it for testing. And then I'm just going to make a public, public int build. So this is going to be the building material. So we're going to check if it exists in the components, the index. And if it does, we're going to add one to it. So actually, one thing that I forgot is in the components, we want to make, we want to keep track of how many of this component do you need uh, and how many is there currently in the item. So what we can also do is we can make public int and then uh, current amount and public int needed. Amount. And then if we go back up here, and we go back to the unbuilt wall. You can now see we have current amount and needed amount. Let's say that we want to use three wood and we want to use two stone. 
example. Now we're going to use that for testing later on. Now let's actually also make a new public function in here that we can call from within the player building. So when the building is done, we want to call the finished building. So let's make a public void uh, build object. So, and what it's basically just going to do is that it's going to place the finished object in place of the current object. So we're going to do game object and then we're just going to call it. So we're going to do game object dot equals to instantiate finished object and then at the transform dot position transform dot position now we switch it out and now we just want to destroy ourselves so we're just going to destroy game object next up so now we can call build object when all the components are done now this check is actually something we want to do from within the player building so in here we first of all want to check if the build index that we have on the player here matches the build index from any of the components first of all we're going to make a new reference so we're going to do a buildable call it buildable lower capital which is going to be equals to well the thing that we just got up yeah so now we don't have to reference it every time then we're going to do for each and then it's buildable dot component comp in the buildable dot build components now we're getting each component in the list of components that is required and we want to check that if the comp dot uh, component index is equals to our build index we want to do something this means that the build index that we have set here matches one from the build components then we want to make another check in here saying that if the component that we now are checking that current amount does not exceed or is equals to the uh, needed amount we will add another one so comp dot current amount but like so Oh, I'm sorry, I made a mistake in here. It should be if the current amount is less than the needed amount. So let's go out and test now. And as since our component index is currently zero, when I go press E, you should see that wood down here on the current amount should go up. And boom, and now if I keep pressing E, it can't go any further up because we already have the max amount. And also if we go to our player and make the building index one now, you should see that now it should move on to adding the stone. Boom, and now we have max. So now all we need to do is just to run a check if it's done and then build the component so what we're going to do to make this check is i'm actually going to make a new function just because this is going to be much nicer to look at so check it if buildable finished and then i'm just going to run that up here after doing this now this check if buildable finished is we actually want to pass in the buildable here so we want to get a buildable we want to get our reference here and buildable and then in here, we're going to give it a buildable. Now, I'm actually just going to copy this for each loop here because we're going to need the exact same type of check, like so. And now, what we're actually just going to do is we're going to check if comp.currentAmount is less than comp.neededAmount. We just want to return, which means we will return, just means that we stop this entire function immediately. Um, and it, which also means that if we get through this for each loop, all the components are already full. So, in this case, we can actually just run buildable.buildObject like so and there we go this should actually just work so let's go test it out first i'll give it three wood one two three and i'll go into the player give him a higher build index and then i'll give him two stone and there you go boom we just built the wall i really hope that this was helpful to you uh there was quite a lot of people that requested this so uh, if you liked it please do leave a like a subscription is always much appreciated and please if you have any questions Feel free to ask in the comments. If there's any other videos you want me to make, feel free to ask in the comments. And uh, have a wonderful day.